So what is the best all around lens for shooting YouTube videos or vlogs uh, when using a Sony crop censored camera? I believe it's this Tamron 11 to 20 2.8 uh, wide, super wide angle lens. And it's a fairly new lens that, that Tamron has released. And in this video, we'll be breaking down the price, some of the pros and cons. I'll be showing some, uh, you know, some example footage and you will be able to see, and I want to know from you if you think this lens is legit. But if we're just meeting, my name is Omar Altakori with Think Media, and we uh, talk about the best tips and tools for helping build your influence with online video. Sometimes we do camera reviews. Sometimes we talk about YouTube strategy tips. And other times we talk about things like the best lenses that'll give you the look you want. And um, if you're pumped for this, hit that like button for me. If you're watching on the live, hit the like button. And if you're watching on the replay, hit that like button. And um, so regardless, if you're just watching this video, just hit the like button. But yeah, Sony used to get a bad rap because when they first started producing these smaller mirrorless cameras, they didn't have like the best, uh, you know, lens selections. And so over the course of time, Tamron has really stepped up. It's a, you know, it'd be like a third party uh, brand, but a well-known company that has created a plethora of lenses for their for Sony's crop cameras and even full frame cameras. And I would say also on the more affordable side. Um, but today we're talking about this Tamron 20, 11 to 20 millimeter 2.8 lens. Uh, the, the retail price of this is $830. And I'll tell you why I think that's a pretty good price uh, when it comes to this lens. Uh, you can even see that people are buying this. There's only a few left uh, here on Amazon. They have some at BNC. We'll post our best links down in the description below if you wanna check it out um, uh, after this video. But just to show you kind of like all like just tests on this lens, this is uh, me just using this lens in a vlog setting. Um, and you can see how how wide it is. This is just me, you know, going golfing because I'm a golfer now. I'm a bogey boy. Um, and then this is kind of like that YouTuber look that a lot of people are going for. So this is kind of like your talking head. So like you're talking like I, I want I want you to see the versatility that you get with this lens. I also was filming Sean, you know, do a talk um, at a at a conference last week with this lens. Um, just an awesome lens for a lot of things. And then you know, our, we live in Las Vegas, so my backyard is the Las Vegas Strip. So I'm out here, uh, you know, on the Strip doing things with the with the fam. But you know, I I think what's just so cool about this lens is just honestly the the versatility. And so uh, I'll show you a little bit in, a, in just a second, like what you get from like super wide to being zoomed in. But like this is Amanda filming my wife. And it's just because it's so wide, it's so easy to use. And here I am jumping in a bunch of emojis. Yo, how about in the comments, put the emoji of the mood you're in. If you uh, are in the comments, put the emoji of the mood you're in. Um, but yeah, so this is the, again, the Tamron 11 to 20 2.8. And uh, it's just an awesome lens. I think uh, I, I love just using it for things like this, just shooting my family. Uh, we just out on the strip, Amanda throwing up dimes in the air. I don't know. But um, but yeah, this is a, it's, it's a great lens. Tamron has, um, I wouldn't say it's like weather sealed, but they do say that it's, it's, a, uh, it's moisture resistant. And so if you are in a humid, a humid area or something like that, it'd be a good lens. But I do love how wide the 11 millimeter is. Um, you know, it really gives you that super wide look. Like right here is a good example of me being fully zoomed out. And then me zooming in at 20 millimeters. And it still gives you like that compressed look still. Like you're not losing, you know, it's not just it just stay wide just to stay wide. And then when you zoom in, it's barely wide. But you're getting a nice medium wide focal length when you start to zoom in. And so this example of me doing a talking head, um, and then I kind of just zoom it in just right there. And like it, it, it's a compressed shot, which I think is cool. There, there's no other lens on the market um, than this kind of lens, like a lens that is, is not only wide, but also gets you a super uh, compressed shot, making your background always blurry. And so talking about like, just camera versus lens real quick. Uh, just because a lot of people in our, in our community 
are newer to shooting video and stuff like that, we always like to say this, that it is the, the camera that you buy gives you the look or the, the, I'm sorry, the resolution you're going for. So if you have a Canon M50 or if you have a, a Sony mirrorless camera, um, that, that the camera you're buying is just going to give you the resolution you're looking for, whether that's 4K, 1080, whatever slow-mo you want. But it's the lens that's going to give you the look. And so many times you buy a camera that somebody you follow is using, but you're not getting the same look that they're producing. The chances are is that you're, you, you need to get the lens that they, that they have and use. And so producing a certain type of look is, is really key. So for example, right now I am actually using the Sigma 16 millimeter on my Canon M50 Mark II for this uh, live stream. And if I swap over to my second angle, this is a 30 millimeter uh, lens on this camera that you're seeing uh, this on right now. And you see it's a lot more compressed uh, but this is the lens itself. And so you got the 11, uh, when you're zoomed out, it kind of goes a little bit big. This lens does weigh at about 12 ounces or so. So not really quite a pound, but, um, but yeah, I mean, super nice. I think it's just, it's just nice in the hands. Like obviously if you put this on like a, a gorilla pod or something, um, it's super, super cool lens, but all that to say, the lens is what gives you the look. And so what's so cool about this lens is Tamron created a lens, I think for solo creators, I think for people who are uh, wanting to shoot themselves a lot of the times and having a nice wide lens kind of like lets you focus on just shooting content. You know, like when you have a compressed angle, a really tight lens or what have you, it's kind of like, you gotta like, you know, find the perfect way. But like when, when a lens is just like nice wide, you just put it where you want it. And a lot of people don't say this or talk about this, but when you have a wider lens, uh, oftentimes it, it it actually improves your audio. So like, imagine you know, like if be, because of when you're when you're like vlogging and talking to the camera, like in my talking head example, kind of like this one, like you don't have to be, you can be right up in front of the camera with with your mic you know, right there on top of the camera and actually it improves your audio. So if you do like to vlog, then 100%, this would be a great lens for you. And um, it's okay if you have a Canon, I see random beef, I have a Canon, like still this is educational, like so you can learn a little bit about lenses just generally speaking. But there is a, another lens that, so, uh, that Sony actually makes that's kind of like this, um, but I'll talk about that ju in just a second. But just want to tell you that this lens being a 2.8 lens simply means that you're going to get two things from this. You're going to get um, a little bit more of a blurry background. That 2.8 number is what's going to give you more of that blurry background that a lot of people are wanting in their videos. Um, and so, you know, even, even at, you know, being right up in front of the camera, on like a studio shot, kind of like you're seeing right now at 2.8, you can see how blurry the screen behind me is and the, how blurry the background is, that's because it's a 2.8 lens and I'm able to do that. Um, and I, I love that even when you go wide, it still carries that blurry background. So that's the first thing you get with a 2.8 lens and, and that it stays 2.8 when you're zooming in and out. You know, like a kit lens you buy with your camera, when you, when you zoom in and out, uh, it changes the aperture, therefore changing your ISO settings or your shutter speed settings uh, actually making your image not look as good. So the first thing you get with a low aperture like 2.8 is better low light and or better background performance. And then the second thing you're going to get is better low light performance. And so uh, why I say that is because the lower your aperture is, the lower your, um, you know, your ISO could be, which when, when, when you want really crispy videos, come on, drippy, crispy, you want a lower ISO, and the only way that could be achieved, achieved is, um, or achieved, if you're, I'm kind of hungry right now, or achieved is, is by bringing down your aperture. And so I know that could be a little bit technical. All that to say, I do think that this lens is a very, um, like, dummy-proof lens. Like, if you just want to slap on a lens in your camera and get that YouTuber look that everybody's uh, going for, you know, the super wide look, but then also the ability to zoom in and out if you like go feel like you're traveling or what have you, or you are doing like the talking head stuff at, um, at 20 millimeters. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, jump on that Sigma 16 millimeter lens, which is like 
quote unquote, the YouTube lens. The cool thing about it is you get 16 millimeters with this lens. Yes, it's at 2.8, but you get 11 to 20 um, with this lens. And so I, I definitely think there's like a great investment when you're getting a lens like this, like you're getting so many looks, right? The lens gives you your look. And so that's, what's so cool about this. Now I would say, and I've just, I'm an honest creator. Okay. We, we always, we're honest here at think media, but, uh, one thing I'm not a big fan of is that it, it, uh, doesn't have any image stabilization, like, you know, technology in it as in optical steady shot. So if you actually, uh, let me just take this off for a moment. If you actually see this lens right here, this is a, a Sony lens that's very similar to that one, but this is a 10 to 18. Um, let me try to get it in focus right there. You see that right there, it says optical steady shot. So this lens in particular actually has technology built in this that'll make your image look less shaky, you know, obviously. And so with the Tamron and not having that at all, if you are kind of compressed, it could get a little, you know, shaky, I guess you could say. But when you're wide, wide angles typically by themselves eliminate shake, generally speaking. So if I just show you like uh, the vlogging clip right here, you could tell that it is a little kind of shaky as I'm walking. But I don't, I don't think it's like all that distracting. But when I'm here riding in a car and I'm not really moving all that much, it doesn't look too bad. Talking head videos, obviously it's sitting on a tripod. So that's something you don't have to worry about uh, if you're putting it on a tripod. Um, but this is Amanda walking, you know, like not, not all that bad of a shot. And this was all shot on a Sony that did not have... Um, image stabilization built in. And so if you are a Sony user uh, and you have like, let's say like, you know, one of the A6000s, you know, we have the A6100, the A63, 65, 64, 6600, all those cameras, this lens is for, but I would say the best lenses, uh, the best cameras that this lens would work with would be either the A6600, which is like the more higher end Sony camera or the, um, the A6500, which doesn't have a flip up screen, but does have in body image stabilization. So those two Sony cameras have that feature. And I think um, it's, it's really key to know that like, if you are going all in and you're making that big investment, think about, you know, if you need in body image stabilization to get a Sony camera that does have it. And uh, Sony has now been implementing more of like the, um, whatchamacallit, like, the, the, their, their digital stabilization. So like the Sony ZV-1, which is a point and shoot camera, has um, an, an active steady shot, which is it's digital in camera. It's not necessarily hardware. I hope that makes sense. Dude, when I start talking like this, I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm a flipping nerd, dude. Why do I know all this information? I just took broadcast, broadcast journalism in high school and here I am talking about like optical steady shot and in-body image stabilization. But all this, I hope you just know this information because a lot of people are in the market for a camera or a lens. These are just good things to know. And just so you can kind of just see the difference uh, maybe in price a little bit is this, um, this, this, so we have the Tamron here at 829, which again, I said the, the 2.8 factor for me, I'm a drippy, crispy, blurry background type of dude. I like, I kind of, I definitely like having that. And then uh, you got the Sony 10 to 18, which right here you can see is uh, it's an F4 lens. So not only is it going to not give you that much blurry background, but it's not going to be the best performing in low light. So if you, if you know what you're doing, like, no, I'm just going to vlog in the daytime, then this would be a, a pretty good option as it is $900. But because it's an older lens, it, you can totally shop use. Always look on the use, you know, section on Amazon like 200 was this 600 bucks that's 300 bucks off bro i just saved you 300 dollars. say take that 300 no, i'm just kidding you can do whatever you want with your money <laughs> i'm not gonna tell you what to do with your money but um but no that this is an, an, an another alternative lens that you can look into a little bit lighter of a lens if you want to see these side by side uh let me show you real quick let me just hop into this mode so we got the tamron and then we got the sony uh, very similar, but this one's definitely lighter. The Tamron's a little bit more heavier, 
but the Tamron is going to really give you that nice, super blurry background, uh, which I'm, I'm just all about. I, I, I really, really enjoyed using this lens. And even one, one form of testing I do oftentimes is be like, Hey babe, here film. <laughs> and so like, if she's able to accomplish, you know, filming a good, I think a lot of people are just documenting their, their time with their families and they just want to film kind of like the general trip they went on, or you're just trying to document maybe uh, your day, a lens like the Tamron 11 to 20, uh, will do that really well. Um, granted, you know, your, your camera settings, but a lot of these, uh, settings on the, these test shots are honestly like in auto mode. So this is like pure auto, um, in regards to the, the camera settings, the exposure settings. So I'm not worrying about any of that stuff. I'm just like, yo, hand it over, babe, go do what you got to do. And then, um, it's, it's good because it's a wide angle lens, but, uh, real quick, I want to shout out our, our sponsor for the video, as you can see on the, below the screen, it's, uh, the stream is sponsored by Streamyard, and Streamyard is literally how I'm conducting this live stream. If you, if you're like, Omar, this ain't no live stream. There's no way this is a live stream. You got like B roll coming up and stuff. Let me tell you, bro, you can add videos to your, you know, um, your live streams easily. So if you're doing reaction videos and you're like, oh, my gosh, can you see that camera in the shot? Oh, my gosh. TikTok reaction videos. You can use StreamYard uh, again. If you wanted to share, you know, your screen like I am right now. Here's a second monitor that I have. This is how we this is how we stream. So StreamYard, you can get a, a special link down in the description below if you want to check them out. But shout out to StreamYard for sponsoring our videos. And we genuinely love StreamYard. So uh, check them out if you're looking into live streaming, um, especially uh, speaking of live streaming, back to this lens. This is an incredible lens for live streaming. And it's because you can do multiple things as far as changing the look of it. Uh, having a wide angle in a very small room actually makes your room look bigger. Like this shot right here isn't, my, my office isn't that big. It's like maybe like a 10 by nine room, but this makes my office look huge. This I'm literally, you turn around from my desk and there's my desk and it's already giving me a nice blurry background. Um, and so if you are even filming in small places, this is an incredible lens um, that you can look into. Definitely just look into the lens. And again, we have links down in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, just to answer a few questions that I've seen come in the comments, um, this is a more or less about a newer camera coming out. He says, doesn't the ZV E10 supposed to come out soon and does it have IBIS? As far as I know, the, the ZV E10 won't have in-body image stabilization, but probably very similar to the Sony ZV-1, it'll have active steady shot. Also, my the Sony A7S III, a $3,400 camera, $3,200 camera, doesn't have IBIS either, but it has active steady shot, which then it just crops in your image a little bit uh, to create more of a fluid, uh, you know, less motion kind of shot. But having a super wide angle lens like this on a camera like that, uh, is great because of that reason, because you're at 11 millimeters and then the crop happens. And then you're kind of like at 14, 15 millimeters, which is still nice and wide to shoot, uh, any, um, you know, vlogging you're trying to do or what have you. Can you use this on the Sony ZV one, uh, negative because the Sony ZV one is a compact camera, uh, or a point and shoot camera, which has the lens built into it. And so, uh, can't quite put this on the ZV-1. ZV-1 does have a wide angle lens though that you can attach to it. We actually have a video on that. Uh, after this uh, stream, we'll make sure to check out the link in the description below to that video. So if you're if you're trying to get that more wide look on the ZV-1, you totally can. You just can't put this lens on it, which I think is nice. Good to know that you don't have to like spend 830 bucks, you know what I'm saying? Um, any other questions that let's see that I can maybe ask, uh, answer? Ooh. Bro, can you tell me the best camera for beginner filmmaker? Now, I take this term kind of, I'm indifferent about the, the term filmmaker because that, that, that doesn't necessarily mean YouTube videos. That doesn't necessarily mean live streaming. It means that you're going to do contract work and you're going to start making money, making videos for other people. I would look into a camera like the Sony a6600. It's a, it's a, pretty pro uh sent prosumer entry level 
um, production camera, I guess you could say. It doesn't have record limit. It has uh, in-body in -body image stabilization. You could shoot at flat colored profiles. So if you're doing color grading and things like that, then the Sony a6600 would be a great uh, camera to look into. Um, and, and all that to say, this, this lens in particular, this Tamron 11 to 20, is for the crop lineup of cameras. And so 6100, 63, 64, 65, 66, and maybe a future camera like the Sony ZV E10 that Sony's dropping uh, apparently over the summer sometime. And uh, if you if you are looking forward for that camera, I would say I would tell you right now to subscribe uh, and maybe we will have our hands on that camera early on. Um, or not, I don't know, maybe, maybe we will or not. But just like the final the final thought is that this this Tamron 11 to 20 is just a great all around lens. If you're trying to produce YouTube videos, if you want a, a versatile shot for, for your videos, your live streams, your vlogs, and things like that. And so that's kind of just what I wanted to show you about on Omar's tech talk, you know? Um, and yes, depending on your budget as Mr. HD shows, if there's something that fits in your budget, one thing to know about uh, lenses in particular is that lenses always hold their value simply because they don't change, right? So you can buy a camera this year and it can be old in two years. But if you bought a lens this year, a lens like this this year, or invested in a lens that you needed, it'll hold its value. And not, not that you're going to resell it later, but just that like you can use it later. If you upgrade your cameras and you stick with the Sony system, you can still use the lens. But if you want to check out the camera that I shot all this B-roll with uh, on, uh, you go ahead and click or tap the screen. And I think you're going to really uh, love the the cameras that you can use to crush YouTube content and video content. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Thank you so much for watching this.